Hey everyone, welcome back to Columbia City. This is episode 30, and today we're going to be working on the Chinatown district of our city. So I've hinted at this, but I haven't like explicitly um, given you a teaser showing, yeah, this is definitely Chinatown, um, at least at the time of this, this recording. But um, this is Chinatown. This is the most highly requested build in the city. We're going to be building it today. I think you're really gonna like what we end up coming up with. So this is going to be the last episode before the rebrands. The rebrand is going to be applied in the next video. I'm not going to... There have been a, a couple of changes uh, to the rebrand and my plans for it. I'll talk about that in that video, um, which will be out hopefully in a couple of days. Let's just say it's going to be really, really cool. I think you're going to love it. Uh, I think it's probably the best um, content revamp I've ever done on my channel by far and some of my new content will be the best content I've ever released quality wise and I think you're really gonna enjoy it so just just wait for that I think you're gonna like it a lot but for this episode we're gonna I mean we're building a really awesome district here like this district is something I've been waiting to build for a while I think a lot of you have been waiting for me to build for a while let me just talk about it quickly so we're actually moving a little bit away from the Pacific Northwest for some of our inspiration today, although we're going to be taking inspiration from multiple cities. The two cities we're going to be taking inspiration from are Vancouver and San Francisco. So Vancouver's Chinatown, we're going to be talking about a little bit later. There's one feature from it that I'll, I'll be really taking a lot of inspiration from. But the main concept for this Chinatown is based off of Stockton Street uh, in San Francisco's Chinatown. It's one of my favorite places on the entire West Coast. It's a really, really awesome street um, filled with all of these old sort of East Coasty looking buildings. Um, and I've actually got some photos from when I visited there about a year ago. And I mean, it, it it's really, really cool. I mean, I highly recommend that... If you ever get the chance, you go ahead and visit Chinatown in San Francisco because it's, it's I mean, so far out of what I've explored, it might be my favorite place in the city. It's a really cool spot, um, but there's sort of this main road uh, called Stockton Street, and it's got a trolley bus line sort of going down through it um, in the middle, and it's, I mean, it's basically what I'm basing this off of. The road that I'm using for my trolley bus road is, it's got a grass median, which is not exactly what I wanted, but um, I'm going to keep it. I actually don't highly dislike it, and it works really well because this this um, trolley bus road by Kloss has custom stops and a lot of custom infrastructure, and I really like it. It's also the only trolley bus road that's got two lanes in each direction that I've been able to find. So that's, I mean, other other than the main avenue, but I don't want a huge median in this really cramped sort of older district. And this is definitely going to be an old district, just like the district we built in the last video. But it's going to be um, a little bit less strict on that front. Like we're going to have some flexibility, like we're going to probably have some modern development here. Just not very modern, and a lot of this stuff here is like rent controlled so a lot of these buildings just haven't changed much in a long time uh, and that's, that's basically the concept behind this district here we're not going to be detailing it as much as i might like to um in some areas however we're going to be adding a bunch of signs i found this awesome like hong kong neon sign pack which I think is going to really add a lot of character to the district. We've also got the main gate here. We've got a main gate at the other end, and we've got a smaller main gate um, on one of the roads over there, although I think I'm probably going to remove that because this is really just the main street of the Chinatown. There's a little bit of stuff uh, on the streets surrounding this main street, but really, Chinatown is this street, and if you've got an idea for the name of this street, definitely leave it in the comments because I really want this district to have a lot of history and character, and I, having some sort of name that might be relevant to Seattle or the Pacific Northwest um, and you know, their Chinatowns, That'd be really cool. So if you've got any ideas, leave them in the comment section below. So now we're starting on probably my favorite part of the episode. What we're building here is this 
little garden. Um, we're going to be using a bunch of different assets I've never really used from the workshop. There are like a lot, there's a whole world of assets for Chinese cities um, out there on the workshop, which I haven't even like looked into yet, but there are a lot of people really taking advantage of it. And I, I found a, a couple of things that I thought would really work here. I've got some walls and I've got a couple of gates um, which work with those walls. What we're going to be building is it's it's based off of this sort of garden that I found in the Chinatown in Vancouver in Canada. Vancouver is a city with a huge um, Chinese population which has a thriving Chinatown which is really awesome and it's got this really cool garden. I think it's some sort of possibly some sort of historical center. I'm not sure what I remember from Google Maps but really cool little garden sort of nestled in into Vancouver's Chinatown. And I'm gonna replicate something sort of similar to that. Um, really, really compact area, um, probably a tourist trap, but it's got like all of these random buildings um, that I'm placing here. We've got this little mini pier um, and I'm just placing a bunch of different like smaller buildings that I guess people can go into that have like courtyards. And we're gonna, we're gonna end up using Ronix's pier assets that we used for the um, the waterfront, the waterfront amusement park, uh, specifically a couple of episodes ago. Um, it ends up looking really good. Uh, I'm happy with it. We've got like these walkways that are sort of indoors uh, here, and I'm just connecting them up. So we've got all these different structures within these walls. Um, there are two entrances, um, which are gonna be accessible via those like wooden walkways. So now I'm just sort of adding supports under the um, the the pathway thing. Uh, the, I don't know where the supports are from, but they're, they're there um, and they make it look like it's not just like floating in midair. So that looks cool. Um, and now I'm just using the terraform tool to try to like make this little pond we've made, um, which by the way, we're going to build like a pond in the next episode as well, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, we're building a lot of ponds. I want to add more like ponds and lakes um, throughout the city. And hopefully some sort of like recreational lake, maybe in the hills for rich people in the suburbs who can like, you know, have motorboats on it or something. I've done that in New Windsor. I, th I think that would be probably a cool like addition here in Columbia City. If you have any like inspiration that I could use for that, let me know in the comments. Um, anyway, a little off topic here. I'm working on the pier pathway um, part of this. It's a little bit awkward, but I wanted these wooden pathways because I wanted the um, sort of edges of them uh, to not just be like retaining walls um, like the bottom uh, of the of the walkways. I wanted them to be elevated with like wooden supports. So these seem like the uh, logical choice. I've got like a lot of really sharp angles though, but I think yeah, like this is basically the final form of um, of this sort of design here. And I'm just adding, I'm making sure like I add uh, pathways that go to either entrance, um, the front and then the back or the side, I guess, of the uh, garden. I've actually downloaded Mr. Mason's bamboo um, assets, which are really awesome. And I'm using those uh, here in the garden. And I could probably use them elsewhere in the city as well um, for like people's backyards, because that's definitely a thing um, that would you, you might see especially in like an area like the Pacific Northwest. I remember out in the Northeast when I lived there saw a lot of bamboo There's also uh, bamboo of sorts here in Southern California as well. Just a little bit less of it um, But yeah, let's see I'm placing I just downloaded a bunch of like mr Mason's grasses that I didn't have downloaded because they were like higher triangle than what I normally wanted to use for Columbia City, but um, I really wanted to go for some heavy detail on this specific build we actually use these grasses um, moving forward a little bit as well, but only in very specific parts of the city. I want to make sure that whatever I'm building has a lot of like purpose to it, uh, and whatever I'm building is uh, very, very light on like, high try stuff. I don't know. I'm really having trouble finding a balance with uh, with with detail and scale in this city because I'm like this city is. Uh, at a level, a level of photorealism that I haven't really had in other cities, and I, I really want to maintain that, but I also really want to expand. So, I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll get better at that as time goes on. Here we're adding some willows, some lily pads um, throughout this little pond here, and um, 
Yeah, the lily pads are a little bit annoying because they're not, um, like, th there's only one lily pad asset, and it's pretty round, so the borders of it are not as, um, as, uh, I guess, soft as I'd like. Like, I'd like it to fade out from really dense lily pads to lighter lily pad, yeah, lighter lily pads uh, if possible, but that's not quite as possible with those. But they still look awesome and they float, so... I'm not complaining. I've used those a lot before in the past. Pretty old asset. But uh, but yeah, I'm also trying to add like a bunch of grasses and stuff to the uh, to the areas that are like more on land within the garden. I've added some magnolia trees uh, as cherry blossoms. I know Mr. Mason has like actual cherry blossom trees. Uh, I haven't downloaded those. I should probably do that. Um, actually, no, wait. I have downloaded them um, at this point, but uh, they're not quite there in in this uh video and yeah i'm just covering the area in bamboo uh because mr mason's bamboo um assets i'd never tried before but they look really good um even as just like normal weeds of some sort uh that you just find in any sort of city and uh and yeah i'm basically just finishing up here adding like really really dense vegetation i never go this dense on vegetation but you're gonna see pretty soon we're gonna have a couple more builds where we do stuff like this and then we probably won't do it again for a while um it's just so that i can really zoom in on these areas and have them be centers of focus within uh the cinematics for the city but yeah like this this looks so cool i'm, I'm really happy i was able to to get it to look right just have all of these different colors and the colors really do shine through even with my depressing LUT my color correction in the city. My color correction is called Vivid, if you're wondering. It's a very specific color correction that I chose uh, specifically for this city, uh, and it it's very depressing, but looks really awesome. My favorite thing about it is it really makes the reds that you see in the city, um, and just the warmer colors generally, mostly reds, um, a little bit more subdued, like a lot more subdued, actually. And uh, I think that adds a lot. Um, to the like color of the city and the atmosphere that we're going for because obviously this is seattle pretty rainy city so yeah that, that's the goal there see i'm adding uh some uh i think these are the ornamental pear trees by mr mason in the middle of the avenue here but they don't end up quite working i want it to be a little bit more generic so i go for the um the, i forget what these are called there's some smaller trees by mr mason and they work pretty well on the avenue Although I might replace them with some um, like yeah, street-specific trees that are that are better with like car heights, um, but I'm not sure if I've really had any problems with car heights. I think those are like higher than they actually look. Um, a lot of city skylines trees are like way taller than um, than others, and it makes it seem like the smaller trees are small, but they're actually pretty decent-sized trees. So now we're moving on to like the final portion of the episode here. I'm just placing a bunch of signs on these buildings. These are from this Hong Kong sign pack on the workshop. Just search up like the letters HK and you should be able to find the pack. Really, really cool pack. I didn't have this when I built the Chinatown back in Aramore, um, but they're really, really, really cool and I love them. Uh, so definitely grab those if you're building a Chinatown in your city. Um, I, I apologize for not build for not placing as much stuff like on the streets themselves and only focusing on the buildings. I'm trying to just have a balance of like the level of detail I place here in the city. It's a little bit um, like lighter on the props. So yeah, apologies for that because there are different things I might want to add on the streets. Uh, I want it to be a little bit more crowded on this street. Um, I think it looks a little bit less crowded simply because there's no parking lane uh, for cars, uh, which I, I could replace the street with like a normal trolley bus road with one lane in each direction, which is actually more like Stockton Street in San Francisco. Uh, I believe at least, I forget specifically, but um, I don't know if that's a good idea because I want the trees to be in the middle. Um, and I also like the... I like the, uh, like, random props that Kloss adds to, um, the, like, the trolleybus networks. Or not, not necessarily random, but more detailed stuff, like the vanilla networks don't necessarily have. 
If you're building a Chinatown in your city, I highly recommend just going really heavy on the signs simply because like these districts were not like built to be Chinatowns. Um, like the history, or at least not most of them, like the history of these districts is usually just that it was just a district within um, the city and then there was a wave of immigration and then it became an ethnic enclave. Um, so that's why there's signs everywhere just on buildings that sort of look like just the buildings of the rest of the city um, for the most part. So yeah, uh, basically keep that in mind if you're building your own Chinatown. Now I'm adding lights to the sides of the street. Uh, I'm sort of alternating them and they've got like lanterns on them. They look pretty cool. And I just sort of add those on either end of the street and alternate from one side to the other for each time I place one. Um, and I end up going, I think, yeah, th there were different versions, white and yellow. I went with the yellow because I thought I would like add a more interesting sort of atmosphere there. And I, I like how it turns out. But yeah, so here we're entering the real, like, final portion of the episode. I'm using this Market Street network, um, which is a really cool asset you should grab. It just basically is, like, market stalls that are, like, on a street, and you drag the network, and they're, like, they're random, and it's really cool. Grab it, because it makes making these little market areas, like, a lot easier. Um, and I wanted to add these, like, market uh, stalls that were not necessarily in, um, like a building itself so I basically started off by just placing some market stalls like in this, that little plot on like the main street there uh, and you see I'm just going into some quick tree detailing then I move back to the market stall placement I'm just placing like an area with tons of them by the main entrance to the Chinatown that's actually closer to downtown and I, I really have them alternate here and it's just this um, probably pretty touristy spot in the city that uh, tourists might go to um and yeah it's just gonna be surrounded with trees and stuff but yeah like grab that grab that uh market stall network uh, i don't know what it's called on the workshop it's in my collection in the description um but it really like it adds a lot to an area like this or even you could build like a farmer's market with it makes uh detailing like that a lot easier but yeah that's basically it we're gonna hop in game for the last, probably, almost definitely, the last live gameplay segment other than live streams for all of Columbia City. So let's hop in game. All right, we're in game. We're at the south entrance to Chinatown. Um, let's take a look at our glorious district here, starting from this southern entrance. Uh, first of all, this is the Chinatown district in the context of everything else. So there's the old town district that we made in the last episode. There is the central train station, or like Union Station, um, and then that is downtown over there. So this is not connected to downtown via light rail, but it is connected to downtown via trolley bus um, here. The, we've got a light rail going down pretty close though, so th there shouldn't be much of a problem for people there. You just have to cross over the train station, which is a little bit awkward maybe, but um, I might make some sort of pedestrian crossing here like some sort of like custom pedestrian crossing or even multiple custom pedestrian crossings but i think just one might do like right around here that would probably be good because otherwise you have to walk all the way around and i want decent pedestrian access in this city i think our pedestrian access might be too good right now way too many people on there um at least for 2020 anyway um, let's take a look at this from the south entrance. So while I'm going through this um, live play, you're going to notice a couple of things that you'll think, wow, I'm really going to miss that once the live plays are gone. Just everything that you're you think you're going to miss, I've got a better replacement for. And if the replacement isn't better initially, we're going to make it better. And it's going to be really good. I, I think you're really going to like it. Um, so make sure that you've got the bell icon on right now so that you get notified when the next video is premiering, um, just so that you're able to chat in the... Uh, chat box uh, when you're seeing the first um, the first episode of the rebrand. So we've got a trolley bus line, and the first stop in Chinatown is just all the way down here at the south end. I don't know what we're going to be doing with this waterfront, but I think it'll be really cool once we get that done. we got this garden area, which looks super cool, and we've placed a bunch of different um, trees, which I haven't really placed much in the rest of the city, and it looks really awesome. Not fully realistic, like I should probably add fences around so people don't fall into the water, 
Um, I can do that another time, though. I'm, not, I'm just not going to worry about that right now. It still looks really good. Uh, another option is just to, like, raise the water level up so that there aren't fences, but you can easily get back up if you somehow fall in. I don't know. Safety things. But I really like this view right here with the um, these trees. Uh, the purple ones. I think they're called jacarandas. I might have butchered that pronunciation. And I don't know if they're in California, but I'm pr if they are... It's either that or a very, very similar tree, but right now we've got a lot of purple trees blooming, which is really awesome. But uh, but yeah, that, that view right there is really cool. But anyway, so we've got all these different um, lamp posts that have lanterns on them. We've got just, yeah, mostly just a bunch of Chrysler buildings, but they've got all of these different signs on them here on this main street. And yeah, they're pretty awesome vibes right here, if you if you look at that. Um, pretty cool vibes, pretty crowded area actually, like, uh, I'd just like a little bit more vehicle traffic in here, but I think we're gonna get that once the area is more developed, but when I was talking about the infrastructure of Klaus's, um, trolley bus networks, this is what I'm talking about. Um, the infrastructure is, like, really, really good, like, they've got these railings here, maybe even, like, more than you'd see in a... An, district like this. I don't remember such good infrastructure in the trolley bus network in um, San Francisco, at least the part near uh, Stockton Street, on Stockton Street. So let's just head over here to the, the other entrance to the Chinatown. Uh, I didn't really add too many um, like props around here, mostly just the signs, but we do have this main gate over here which is pretty typical of Chinatowns um, to have like a main gate on. I don't know if it's either end, but there's definitely a main gate at, in some place. Ignore these stupid height differences. I will fix that at some point. But yeah, this is the uh, market stall area, which is pretty cool. We're gonna be adding more of that in the future in different areas, but yeah, I mean, this is Chinatown as a whole. These are like areas where I'm, I, I still haven't added certain like signs in certain areas and they're going to get a little bit sparser as we like move out from that main street but there are still going to be like signs on buildings over here and it's still going to have a the same sort of vibe i've also placed down some parking garages which were theoretically like built at different times so they have different designs like i didn't really want to place like identical parking garages those are for the the train station here and we're gonna have some sort of walkway where you can really easily get down here and then to the main station so that'll be pretty cool um, I like, this is like my favorite parking garage out there. Like, it's so cool. Look at, look at the detail on that. I haven't even seen it all that close, and it's awesome. Really, really cool asset by King Leno. I love all of those, uh, parking garages there. Anyway, that's basically it for episode 30 of Columbia City. That was the last live play. Um, we're gonna go down on the grounds, and you're gonna, you're gonna think, oh no, we're never gonna see the street level view again, we're never gonna have street level audio ever again. No, you're gonna have it, you're gonna have it in the next episode, um, and you're gonna probably even have more of it. And we're gonna keep the ambient sounds tuner, and we're not gonna have music in these segments. It's gonna be good. You're gonna enjoy it. Everything's gonna be okay with no live gameplay. Because the frame rate is getting pretty bad. We're down at 8 frames per second here, and it's gonna get worse because we're looking at an area that's not even fully filled in. But, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Helps out a ton. Um, that's how, how uh, people find find the videos. Let's just uh, pretend we're, like, grabbing lunch here. Oh, that's awesome vibes. Look at that. But, yeah, uh, subscribe if you're new around here. Hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you get notified whenever I upload and, I mean, whenever I premiere a video because I do premieres, which are, like, basically live streams where you can talk in the chat, but it's the video going live so you see it with everybody else for the first time. It's really cool. Make sure you're uh, subscribed to the channel with the bell icon on for that, especially for the next video because uh, the next video is the first one with the rebrand. Um, and what else? You could follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those in the description. And if you want to go into the Columbia City save game and look at maybe areas that I don't really include in um, in these live gameplay portions uh, get down street level or just build your own stuff in Columbia City you can go download the save game uh, that's available to patrons uh, so head over to patreon that's in the description you could also get your name in the credits or early access to videos and teasers and stuff like uh, right now 
patrons already have access to like the, the new thumbnail design for the rebrands, stuff like that. So yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And here, here we go. We're, we're signing out of the last live gameplay of Columbia City. Um, I, I'm, I'm sort of over-dramatizing this. I think that's a word. Um, just because a lot of people have really like wanted the, the live game to stick around, but it, we're gonna be fine. It's it's gonna be fine, everybody. See you in in the next video.